This is a Roland MC202 micro composer. Uh, it's called that because it came after things like the MC8 and MC4, but unlike those, this one's actually got a little synth uh, in the box going there. So uh, some people claim it's the first groove box. I'm not too convinced by that because it's got no drums. So yeah, you can sequence it. It's got a built-in sequencer and the synthesizer so you could say it is but i always think of groove boxes having as having a bit of everything going on you know drum machine and, and synth and maybe sampler um i bought it oh i guess i want to say about 86 87 so it wasn't too old when i got mine um it's very old now <laughs> and it's a little bit a little bit grumpy and a little bit hard to wake up in the morning like a lot of us um uh, please forgive if the if the pitch goes in and out of tune and it's it's crackly pots galore so you'll hear a lot of that going on but i just wanted to demo what it sounded like in case you've never heard one it's very similar to the um sh101 it came out the year after i think i think 101 was 82 this was 83 uh you can always check wikipedia and find out if i'm wrong so let's hear some sounds there you go it's a lovely one to start with we will get dodgy keys. I'm just going to play the bare sounds to start off with so you hear what everything sounds like. So it's a one VCO synth, obviously. Uh, here, we're listening to the square stroke PW pulse. Width. So I can uh, alter the duty cycle here. Because this slide is set on manual, so or can switch it to be done by the LFO. And the depth then is controlled here. Lovely pseudo multi oscillator set. Or I can switch it to being swept by the envelope, of which there is only one over here. So now. that and then now we have the sawtooth fairly standard and then the sub oscillator which goes one octave down square wave really nice chunky listen this is this is with no filtering on because the filter's wide open Two octaves down, or two octaves down, PWM. Now, if I mix that in with this PWM. So that's the oscillator. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little sequence in just so I can twiddle with this and not be playing this. Mm, not that great to play rubbery keyboard. It's a little bit. Well, if you ever had a Spectrum, you pretty much know what it's like to play an MC202 live. Um, right, so let's put a little sequence in. Clear everything. Let's check off and on again. And let's put the sequence in.
that will be all at a time, which is lovely. Let's put this on cycle, put the cycle mode so it loops around. So let's hear it. <laughs> And now I'm going to start bringing the filter down. And then sweep it by the envelope. Self oscillate, obviously. So let's put a little bit of delay on it. It's out of shot, but I've got the more pedal here. For years, the 202 was my main sequencer. I used to use it for all of my bass lines. And the great thing about it was, I mean, I don't know if you can tell here, but uh, it has its internal sequencer, but it's actually a two-channel sequencer. So if you see here, I don't know if you can read it. I'll maybe try and zoom in. It has a CV gates out for both a built-in synth and an external line. So you could choose what you were sequencing. You could enter two lines on here, albeit painstakingly. It's, it's not... A, a, an easy thing to program it's probably easier than the mc4 and mc8 from what i remember but i used to use it because it was rock solid and it had loads of connections he had the uh the roland din sync connections here uh and he also had uh obviously the cv gates out but a cv gate in so i could play it from a better keyboard if i wanted to um and it also had uh memory here 
you see here, uh, you can save your sequences to cassette. It's, isn't that amazing? You can save to cassette and it'll maybe load again. Or maybe not, but it sometimes does. Also, the cassette ports doubled up as sync ports. So you could use this to basically stripe a sync code, which is called FSK back then, I think, frequency shift key, um, to one track of, uh, well, my, I had a four track, so one track of my four track. And then this would stay in sync. And then when I restarted it, I could put down multiple lines. So I could put down loads of lines and build up huge cascading sequences. I couldn't because it took too long to program. But the possibility was there. It was a great bit of kit in, in terms of how much power is in the one box. And as you've heard, the synth is nice. I mean, let's, let's hear some other sounds from it. Uh, let's see. Let's get a lead sound. some delay now obviously on here I'm not going to be uh, too I don't want to be playing too many searing solos because it's quite difficult and of course some of these keys don't work some reverb on. switch the effects off again to hear the bare sound. I mean, it really does depend if you like that rather than sound, but, but I grew up listening to things like SH-101, so I love these kind of sounds. So you notice here there's the envelope mode, which I'm on now. It's also a game mode. Which is great for sequences, because you get this kind of... baseline yeah that'll do cycle that So you can 
Bingo, yeah, quite an aggressive soundtrack. Look at this pseudo kick. I take the oscillators out. There you go, there's your industrial track right there. Bear in mind, all we're hearing now is the uh, filter. The oscillators are all off. There's a lot of weight to that at the bottom end. I hope you can hear if you're on headphones or decent speakers. Resonance down, put the oscillators back in. To envelope mode. Stop that. So the sequencer really um it was it was difficult to use. I used to use it mostly in step time because then it didn't rely on my timing to play it, because it has got a real time mode here. But I'll show you what it's like. So let's power it off and on again so it's clear. So this is the real time mode. Little metronome for two bars, then play. Hit the wrong one there. But now let's listen back to that wonderful piece of playing. all over the shop. When it's recording you real time, it's recording in real time. There's no quantization uh, that you can apply to it. Well, actually, that's not true because you can go back in afterwards and replay your timing if you're that brave. You do that by doing this. You go into step time and then... Well, you get the point. I mean, I've forgotten what I played first time round, so that didn't work too well. If you want loose timing, it's great for that. And things that don't cycle perfectly, it's also good for that. But if you want metronomic 80s bass lines, it's the real-time mode not, is not going to be for you. It'll be the normal mode where you just put a bass line like this. And then cycle it and it comes out. Perfectly regularly. Once you've got that in, you can knock about with it more because there's also accent and portabent on here, a little bit in a kind of 303 ish kind of way. So I can do that by going into step edit mode, and then you can step through your notes of the sequence. And decide which ones you're going to want to be accented or portamentoed. So let's just portamento start off with. So I'll have it clear at the start, and then... And now I've got this. some accents in now, uh, edit mode, step mode, and then accent. So now, So it 
works mm. and, you know, decades before Electron, it's programmable per step. Albeit, you know, not quite parameters at locks, but yeah, it was pretty good for 83 if you could actually understand it and use it, which a lot of the time I couldn't. I just played things in step time, tried to count things out. I mean, it, it's made me a lot better in maths trying to count out sequences and work out what's going on. And that's with the one sequence. You can see here it says one. That means channel one of its sequence, which is itself. If you do this, then you can start channel, uh, start sequencing the external uh, gear that you want. And then you can have the magic of having two interweaving monophonic synth lines, uh, or as um, Roland, I think, called it, a synthesizer duet. Uh, anyway, back to this. So that's a lot of the sequence uh, stuff out of the way. I haven't gone into the stuff where you... Actually, I should show you that. Let's take this... Let's get rid of that sequence and put a new one in. Uh, Okay, that'll do. So that comes out as this. Okay, quite long, but that gives us room to do this. We can go into edit mode and we can go through and muck about with the timing of the notes afterwards. So you notice here you've got timings here from like whole bar down to silly little triplet, what's, what's it's down here. I can go through the notes here. And these are all at the minute 24s. But I can change anything here by choosing what, not, what uh, length I want. So let's have it start at, enter. Doesn't actually change it till you enter it. But once you've chosen something, like here, if you go enter, it just keeps applying to the next notes. Let's put some triplets in here, then some normal notes, and then more triplets. Now let's see what we've got, it's going to be a right mess. Let's uh, cycle that. And how about sticking some portamento and accents in for no reason? Right, here we go. Uh, go through steps. to that now. The only thing that could make that any better is random accents, so let's put them in there. Now we have this. Beautiful thing. Oh, let's put some let's put some effects on it. That's gonna save everything.
I think you'd agree this is a masterpiece. quite fast. Somebody's going to sample that for something. I don't know what, but... Back from the uh, brink of madness, we have a nice bass sound. You can always rely on the 202 or the 101. A great bass sound. can of course get much more out of it if you plumb it into other gear. If I had my 808 at the side here or a 606 and I was din syncing it or if I had an SH101 over to here and I was using that or even you know any other modular gear you could get a lot more out of it but it isn't I wouldn't say it's an easy piece of gear to get to know. The synth is the synth is very normal and it's very very playable if you're lucky enough to be able to find what it does play. And the filter is that lovely. So the, the LFO's got a delay function, which I really like, because it delays it coming in. I mean, it's sad there's just the one way form, but. And I would have liked. I would have liked some noise somewhere. You know what I mean? Apart from just the pots. But. It's really a wonderful little synth. I mean, look at the size of it. It's it's kind of just perfect. And it, it, I mean, I've got it running off mains here, but it's it's battery powered as well. So this is probably one of the original synths that you could take, you know, on the journey with you on a train or something and just sit and tootle about from the, from the headphone out and compose. You know? 
Who knows, maybe somebody, maybe Vince Clark or Martin Gore did that on the plane somewhere sometime. I mean, as usual, I have to get into the uh, less playable noise. Because I just, I just like them. Now, if there's, I could program a sequence in here, so let's have it so it's the delay comes at the end of it. So it sounds normal apart from when the, the modulation comes in. It's an old synth, I mean, that's what happens. We've all been there. Let's get rid of that modulation. Put this into a tasteful vibrato. To the track. Let's see if we can. Let's get it resonating. Oh, let's switch that down a bit. Oh, look at that.
one, so that's not a bad. That's quite a nice, complex sound out of such a small synthesizer. So yeah, I'm playing with it tonight and just I'd forgotten how much fun it was. It really is a great little synthesizer and obviously a two-channel sequencer as well. It's got so much packed into it. I relied on this for years just for tape sync before I got anything else going at all. Using the FSK out of here was a lifesaver because everything ran off it. I synced this to tape and then this read the code back and this got my 606 or my 808 in sync. And I did multiple passes to lay down different sequences and bounce and stuff. You, it, it was There was nothing else I could get that I could afford at the time. Not to mention having two channels of sequencing and having a great built-in synth. Um, and it stood the test of time. I'm mean, thinking it was made in 1983. It's still going, okay, it's a bit, it gets a bit wobbly when you press things. But I mean, it is, it's a flexible front panel. If they put... You know, if it had been made of metal for a start, I'd never be able to afford it, but like it might it might be a little bit more in tune than it is. But it's done well tonight and I'm very pleased with it. The Roland MC two oh two microcomposer. <laughs> 